What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoose, you are awesome, and Undying Games has posted the items for Ethereal on their website in a searchable database. Ethereal is a third person MOBA currently in development. Now, we still don't know myth kits or stats, but I think it would still be fun to try and make a few builds based on what we do know. Once the game is released, I'll try these builds out and see if they actually work. As Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Most of you know that I identify as a support main, however, I really want to play Malaya in Ethereal and she's a Reaper. Reapers are the assassin class with a passive that allows them to wall climb. Malaya will be our first build. A few things we need to consider before we start is that we have 6 item slots to work with. There is a 7th slot just for boots, so we can consider those to be free. And there are also separate slots for potions, so no need to worry about those. Part of the build includes a pre-made loadout that we can pick, so we'll add that in at the end. Finally, we'll choose which familiar to use with the build. Familiars are little sidekicks that do have their own abilities, so this isn't just a cosmetic choice. However, we don't know yet what any of the familiars do, so I'm just going to kind of wing it. Now let's get building, starting with what we know of Malaya. She's an assassin, so I imagine we'll want to jungle with her. We know from some clips of her old model that she'll have a shield ability of some sort, so we'll take that into account. And I'm going to assume that she's a physical damage dealer on account of her giant fucking claws. My goal is going to be to create a bursty assassin that relies on lifesteal in conjunction with her shield to sustain herself long enough to get a kill and then peace out. I'm not sure if the shield just mitigates damage or blocks a certain amount, I just know that shielding and lifestealing go together like gin and juice. For the build, we'll only be looking at fully upgraded tier 3 items, and we'll start with our boots. We're going to slot in spiked boots. This gives us 60 movement speed, 15 physical power, 10 physical pin, and a passive effect called Frenzy, a stacking 5% attack speed bonus when we land a basic. It caps out at 5 stacks for 25% attack speed. Our first item will be a mark, which is a jungle item. The tier 3 mark we'll build into is Mark of the Sentinel Hunter. This one is a bit unique. The other tier 3 marks evolve from having a smite effect at tier 1 and 2 into having an ability that affects enemy myths instead of minions at tier 3. The mark of the sentinel hunter is the only one that retains the smite effect. I would usually want something that affects myths instead of neutral minions in the late game. However, you'll understand why I'm picking this one when I go over its second active. The mark gives you 500 health, 25 armor, 25 magic resist, and 20 movement speed. The secondary active breaks crowd control and makes you immune to CC for 2 seconds. I know from my days of using Hunter's Guile on Shimbi that having CC immunity is invaluable for hot assassin checks. I'm going to be dependent on lifesteal and I can't swing if I'm stunned. Our second slot will be Blood Pack Scythe. This item gives 15% lifesteal, 40 physical power, and 20% attack speed. It has the Blood Letter passive that gives us a percentage of health back when we kill an enemy. That could be a minion or a myth. And the heal is increased exponentially when it's a myth that gets ganked. What I'm really interested in is the shield you get from the excess healing. I plan to ambush people with Malaya and get a few hits in before they even know I'm there. If I can convert the lifesteal from that damage into a shield, then all the better. I'll be able to stick to people even longer. Next, I'm going to get the Crimson Dragon Sword. This comes with 90 physical power and 25% lifesteal. The passive called with Fire and Fury causes 75% of health we gain through lifesteal to apply a 3 second damage over time. This maxes out at 500 damage. This item seems essential to any lifesteal build. The fourth item is a spear called Delta's Rupture. It gives us 15% attack speed and 15 physical power. This comes with Thousand Sided Strike. Every 30 seconds, your next melee hit will strike 4 times for a total of 150% damage, and 2 of the strikes will apply on hit effects. The 30 second cooldown can be reduced by landing some basic attacks. Now that we have a badass spear that quickly applies on hit effects, what are we going to do with it? We're going to equip Heaven's Blade. This will give us 100 physical power, 15% lifesteal, 10% attack speed, and a passive on hit effect that will knock enemies up on the 4th melee strike for 1 second on a 10 second cooldown. With our Delta's Rupture applying 4 hits in 1, we're assured a knock up as soon as we ambush someone, which will give us more time to build shielding via Blood Pack Scythe and damage via the Crimson Dragon Sword. 
But wait, there's more. On top of all this, we'll pick up the Torment Rifle. We get 30 physical power, 25 magical power, which I don't think we'll care much about, and 15% attack speed. The passive for this one is Corruption Rounds. Landing a basic attack corrupts the target and causes subsequent attacks to deal 3-7% to of their health as magic damage. And there's our full loadout. We'll be able to jump someone, hit them four times, knock them up, deal some true damage, build a shield, and lifesteal the entire time. In the event that we get CC'd, we could just break it with our mark. I would say that this build has too much lifesteal, however, the Crimson Dragon Sword will be converting that into damage. And even if it caps out at 500, I still think this will be a pretty sweet assassin build. I do see two problems here though. One, we're going to be a glass cannon that really <laughs> leans into that lifesteal. And two, there's no crit chance or armor pin. Well, there's a little bit of armor pin on the boots, but that's about it. And uh, that's going to reduce our burstiness. We need to be a bursty assassin. Hopefully we can shore up the weaknesses via our loadout, but from what I've seen, crit isn't something you can take. Maybe Undying is leaning away from the RNG factor that critical strikes provide? I'm not real sure. I'll probably take the Assault Tree here and invest in Penetration, but I'll have to see the finished product first. As far as Familiars, I don't really know until they reveal what the Familiar abilities are, but I guess for now I'll grab the Sword Rat. He's cute and he's got a sword, so why not? And that's it for now, folks. I'll be putting some other builds together soon. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments below. Check out all the items on the Undying Games website and tell me what you would sub in or how you would build. As always, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. But for now, this is the Mangu signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangu!